Okay, let's solve this problem. Uh, let's prove this. For all real numbers, a and b, we have a plus b modulus is less than or equal to a modulus plus b modulus. And this is yet another triangle inequality. We have proved this for complex numbers rather than real numbers. So if you, if you assume the triangle inequality for complex numbers, then this is just a corollary to that. Any real numbers are complex numbers, so it's done. Well, uh, let's see another proof uh, without using the inequality for complex numbers. Okay, so first uh, let's square this. Then that is a plus b squared. You know, a and b are real numbers, so we have this. And this is a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. But that is less than or equal to a squared plus 2ab modulus b squared. But this is equal to a modulus squared plus 2a modulus times b modulus. Now this is just a property of absolute values. So this, but this is a modulus plus b modulus squared. So if we take uh, the square root of both sides, we have uh, this. Okay, so that's done. Next, let's prove this. So this is another version of the triangle inequality. For any real numbers a and b, we have a minus b modulus greater than or equal to a modulus minus b modulus. So let's prove this. Actually, this can be proved by using the previous version of the triangle inequality, this one. So first, Let's rearrange uh, this inequality in the following manner. So move this b to the uh, left hand side and we swap left and right. So we have a less than or equal to a minus b plus b. So we need to prove this. Okay, but this looks almost like the triangle inequality we have just proved. So instead of a plus b, we have a on the left hand side. Instead of a, we have a minus b. Instead of b, we have a, uh, we have b, the same b. Okay, so let's see. Uh, by uh, the triangle inequality, we have, let's see, C, uh, let's see, uh, B plus C less than or equal to B plus C, right? So let's let A B B plus C. Okay, then uh, C is equal to A minus B. Therefore, we have, uh, let's see, A less than or equal to A minus B plus B, and done. Right, just replace the C with this and replace B plus C with A. And that's it. Next, let's solve this equation. 
where z is a complex number. So we want to find all the complex numbers that satisfy this equation. So uh, from this equation, it is obvious that z is not equal to zero. So we can use a polar, the polar form of this. So r and e to the power of i theta, where r and theta are real numbers. And in particular, r is positive. Okay, so let's put this into uh, the given equation. That will give you r i theta to the power of m is equal to 1. Okay, but this is exponential function, so we have r to the power of n, and by using the Morvor's theorem, we have i n theta equal to 1. However, the modulus of this part is 1. Okay, so if we take the modulus of both sides, uh, we have r n. r is positive, so we can just get rid of this modulus symbol. And we have i n theta, but this is 1, so this is r n, which is 1. But r is real, so therefore this radius must be equal to 1. Okay, now we have, uh, after all, we have e to the power of i n theta equal to 1. So that means uh, n theta must be a multiple of 2 pi. Right? Because this theta is the argument. So in the unit circle at the origin. So if this is z, then this is the argument. Okay, so z is equal to i theta. In this case, uh, this argument is theta. But in this case, n theta is the argument, which is uh, and this number is equal to 1. So that means the argument is 0 or 2 pi or any multiple of 2 pi. So this k is uh, integer. Okay. Therefore, all possible values of theta are 2 pi k over m, where k is an integer. Okay. So The possible value of r is 1, and possible values for theta are uh, 2 pi k over n. And that's it. Next, let's prove this famous formula for trigonometric functions, sine. And actually, at the same time, we want to prove uh, the following. Cosine alpha plus minus beta is equal to cosine alpha cosine beta minus plus sine alpha sine beta. Here, this plus corresponds to this plus, and this minus corresponds to this minus. Okay. And here, this plus corresponds to this minus, and this minus corresponds to this plus. Okay, let's uh, first let's prove for plus. Okay, so let's see. So we just ignore this part. Okay, so we prove this formula at once uh, using the polar form. Okay, so first consider this exponential of i alpha plus beta. So by the definition of cosine and sine in our uh, lecture, this should be equal to cosine alpha plus beta and i sine alpha plus beta. Okay. On the other hand, this is equal to 
you know this is the exponential function so it's I alpha plus I beta but uh, this part is cosine alpha plus I sine alpha and this part is cosine beta plus I sine beta so just expand this uh, product then we have cosine alpha times cosine beta and uh, minus sine alpha sine beta and I sine alpha cosine beta and cosine alpha sine beta so let's now by comparing the real part and the imaginary part we have this formula right so cosine alpha plus beta is equal to cosine alpha cosine beta minus sine alpha sine beta and sine alpha plus beta is equal to sine alpha cosine beta plus cosine alpha times sine beta. And that's it. And what about the negative sign? Well, uh, there are multiple ways to prove that. So we just replace this plus sign with the minus sign. Okay. So here we have minus. And here we have minus. But if we have minus sign, then this is minus. So and if you calculate this again, this will be plus and this will be minus. Okay, that's one way. And another way is, uh, let's see. So another way is to consider this as exponential of i and minus beta. Okay, in this case, we have, this is plus and this is minus beta minus beta here okay so however uh, cosine is an even function so cosine minus beta is equal to cosine beta and sine is an odd function so sine minus beta is equal to minus sine beta so that so after all we have uh, cosine alpha plus i sine alpha and cosine beta minus i sine beta as before so we should get the same result again okay and so you should remember this cosine is an even function and sine is an odd function and that's done now let's try to prove this famous uh, theorem or uh, formula identity or whatever uh, but this is almost trivial, right? Because uh, by the definition of cosine and sine, these are the 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 x and y coordinates of a point on the unit circle on the complex plane. So real uh, imaginary, and this is one right it's a unit circle 
So that is cosine theta and sine theta is this uh, point uh, coordinate. So that means the distance between the origin and this point is equal to 1. And that is if you square the distance then we have this. And that's it. And finally, let's prove this formula. In this case, plus minus, no, these are in this order. Plus corresponds to this plus and this minus. And this minus corresponds to this minus and this plus. Okay. Anyway, uh, all you need to do is just you know, apply the definitions. Okay, so what's tangent? Alpha plus beta. Alpha plus beta is that is sine alpha plus beta over cosine alpha plus beta. But uh, we have proved uh, formulas for this uh, sum of angles, so that is sine alpha cosine beta. And in this case of sine, it is plus. So cosine alpha sine beta. And in the case of cosine alpha plus beta, that's cosine alpha cosine beta minus sine alpha sine beta. So uh, let's see. Then how do we find this from this? Okay, here, here uh, in the numerator we have tangent alpha and tangent beta. So how can we turn this into tangent alpha plus tangent beta? Okay, so to see this, we want to get rid of this cosine beta here and we want to get rid of this cosine alpha here, then uh, we have terms of only alpha and only beta. So that can be done by dividing the numerator by uh, cosine alpha and cosine beta. So if we do this, then we should also divide the denominator by the same quantity. Okay, so by multiplying this to this and this, we have sine alpha over cosine alpha. Of course, cosine beta will cancel. And here we have sine beta over cosine beta because cosine alpha will cancel with this uh, this cosine alpha. And in the denominator, we have cosine alpha, cosine beta here, so that will be 1 here. And minus sine alpha and cosine alpha and sine beta, cosine beta. So that is tangent alpha plus tangent beta over 1 minus tangent alpha and tangent beta. And I think you can do the same thing for the negative sign here. And that's it.